everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you guys how to add a cinematic title to your video inside of DaVinci Resolve 15. So we're going to be starting over on the Edit tab. Go over to the Effects Library, it's in the top left hand corner, and you're going to want to find the Title section in the Toolbox. So from here you can use a basic text title which has less options but if you want to customize it further I recommend using the new text plus titles because they give you a lot more options. So now we have a basic text plus title added into our video. If you're going to want any video clips to show below it make sure that you move the text plus title onto video track 2 so that video track 1 will be in the background and then video track 2 the text plus title will show on top of that. Next we can change the font of our title by going up to the inspector if it's not already open and going down to font here. So for font, I am pretty fond of Babis Noe, which is a big titling font you can get on defont.com completely for free. And we can put in the text for the title of our video. So in many cases, your title is going to be the title screen for your video that goes at the front. And we're going to want it to be large and very visible. So I'm going to type in the name of a possible short film. So Master of Honor here, that's a fake title. So you can see that within the confines of our window here, that is quite gigantic. So I'm actually going to drop the base size here down to 0 0.15 and hit enter. So that's gonna be our starting size at the start of the title sequence. But what we can do is we can have it gradually increase in size. But what we can do is have it gradually increase in size as time goes on. So if you want it to increase or decrease in size over time, it's a good idea to set keyframes over here by clicking on these little diamonds. And uh, we can also extend the length of our title and the timeline to be however long we think it needs to be for this video. So I'll make this around seven seconds. And now in order to animate the size over time, what we need to do is basically go to the last frame of the video and increase the size. So I'm gonna increase that to about uh, 22.5 maybe 22.0 and what you'll notice is that on the right here the diamond immediately gets checked because a new keyframe is automatically added so it's going to start at the initial size of 0 0.15 but because we set a new size at a different point in the timeline it's going to have that new size here and everything in between is going to be animating over time and that's the basics of using keyframing if you didn't already know now we can make it more interesting too. We can start off with a blur effect. So if we want to add in a blur, then we can go over to video transitions and choose blur dissolve. We just left click that and drag it onto our clip. Now initially it's going to be a purely horizontal blur, which may look a little bit like this. You may like that, you may not. Uh, if you want it to look a little bit different, you can make it 0 0.5 horizontal, 0 0.5 vertical. And that'll give you an end result that looks something like this where it's actually blurring in both directions. Or you can make it a zero horizontal blur and a 1.0 vertical blur, which will change it to be something like this. So whichever style works for you is what you can go with. And if you want to extend the length of the blur, you can just drag this blur effect over and add in more frames. So with a 1.0 horizontal strength for the blur and about two seconds of duration, it'll look kind of like this. And note that while that blur effect is occurring, the size of the text is still getting bigger over that seven seconds. Now we might want it to fade in and fade out so that the text becomes visible over time. And then at the end, it fades out. We can do that really easily by using these little notches at the start and end of our title sequence. So you can actually left click on these and drag them in to create a quick fade in effect. So you can see how it creates a little slope there. And at the end, we can drag this knob to the left to set the starting point for where it's gonna fade out. And with those added, we can hit play one more time. So now you can see it's not only blurring in, changing the size, but it's also fading in. And then at the end, it fades out. So to make the title sequence a little bit more interesting, you may also wanna add in a sound effect. So I pulled this one off of freesounds.org. It's a good site if you wanna find some free sounds you can use for creative projects like this. So this sound effect is actually a bit longer than the length of our video clip here. So we could make the title longer or we can cut off part of the sound. So I'm actually going to match them up and I'm going to drag the knob in the top right hand corner of the audio in the same way we did to fade out the video. We can also fade out the audio just by dragging that notch over to the left. 
And now it can sound and look something like this. Okay, so pretty cool. So if you have a video clip you want to show during this time, you can drag it into your timeline, making sure that it is on video track one. You may also want to go over to the video tab of the inspector for that clip and decrease the opacity. That's one way you can make the text seem more visible by making the background video less visible. So I can also add in a fade in for this video clip, mute the audio because we probably don't want that. And uh, let's go ahead and hit play and see how it looks. So how well it's going to play back in your timeline is going to depend on how much special effects you added into your title. Um, but when you do export it, it should look fine and play back at the proper speed. One more way you can make your title stand out is to add in drop shadow. So for text plus, if you want to do that, go over to the shading tab and in inspector and fusion. And then you want to choose select element. It's four or three, three, I guess. It's called black shadow here. So if we enable that, there's already some preset defaults for a shadow on our text. Now you may like that, you may not. So you can decide if you like that. One really important setting, if you want to adjust the position of the shadow to make it more or less obvious, you can come down here to position and check out the offset. If you reduce that closer to zero, then it's going to be less visible as such. And if you increase it, such as to 0 0.10 and 0 0.10, then it's going to stand way out. So you probably want to keep it a little bit closer to uh, zero there. So there's just a little very subtle shadow effect. And if you want it to be below rather than above, then just make sure that the Y is negative. And there you go. So that's going to be it for this video. Hopefully you guys were able to follow along and get a pretty cool title for your video sequence. I've been Chris. Thanks for watching. And I will see you guys in my future video content.